5.3 solving trig equations. Generally, <clears throat> okay, generally, you are looking at a trig equation and you're assuming you can go around the circle one time, 10 times, 12 times. So your answer, whatever you have, would include plus, don't write this down, plus 2k pi. That means k is the many times you go around the unit circle. So you can find an answer and say, I want to go five times around the unit circle. So you would just go from that point five times around. We are not doing generalities. We're doing a specific interval, meaning you're not going to ever need this. It's one of the reasons I'm not having you put your answers in WebAssign. So on your test, when you have it, you will be given a question, and it will say over the specific interval of 0 to 2 pi. Okay? It will say that. In other classes that you take, higher classes, it may not give you that specific interval, and then you would have to put this at the end of your answer, but we're not going to do that. So go ahead right now in this question and add the interval of 0 to 2 pi, meaning I just want the answer. Okay, so here we go. All right, and if you notice at the top, it's, there's different kinds of problems, just like you have different factoring problems and stuff. Same thing here. If you look at this example... This one has one trig function, just one single trig function. You guys see that? What is the single trig function that I see? Sine, sine of x. <coughs> this is how I tell everybody to do it. I think it's the best thing. I'm going to rewrite the problem. So I have 2 sine x. The sine and the x go together. Minus 1 equals 0. First thing I would do is I would highlight your trig function, sine x. Guys, we're solving. We always want x to be what? By itself. So how would you get sine of x by itself? What are we going to do? I'm going to add 1 to both sides, right? So I have 2 times the sine of x equals 1. I'm going to highlight this again just so you guys can see. I, I still want the sine of x by itself. So now what would I do? <clears throat> divide by 2 perfect I'm going to divide both sides by 2 so I have the sine of x equals 1 half okay that is your answer sine of x equals 1 half okay that's not your final answer now you go to the unit circle and you say where on the unit circle is the value of the sine one half. So on your unit circle, if we need to remind ourselves, okay, if we're on the unit circle, sine is what value? Yeah. Sine is y. Cosine is what value? X. <coughs> Tangent is what value? Y over x. Y over x, because we're on the circle. So cosecant is what? One, one over, over y. y. Secant is? 1 over x, and cotangent is x over y. So I'm going to go to the unit circle, and I'm going to find all of what? The y values. If I were you, I would write down a y, so you remember where to look. But you want all the y values that are 1 half. So you go over here to the unit circle, and I look. Where is positive 1 half? Tell me. At pi over 6 on the unit circle. At pi over 6, agreed, right here. And where else? God bless. Five pi over six. And at 5 pi over 6. So your two answers would be x equals pi over 6 and x equals 5 pi over 6. There are your answers. Question was, do we keep it in radians? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Is that incredibly difficult? No. no. You're solving an equation. You're going to find a value. And then that value, you have to think, okay, do I look at x? Do I look at y? Do I look at y over x? Whatever. You find it on the unit circle. It honestly doesn't get much harder than that. It's just basically solving equations. You just have that extra step at the end to find where on the unit circle we're talking about. Everybody at home, we okay? Yeah. Okay. Let's scoot down a little bit. Again, it says find all the solutions. Look, it says over the interval. They're giving you the interval there so you don't have to even worry. 
But again, I told you, I'm going to give you the interval in every time. So in this case, we're trying to solve for the trig function. You're solving for the trig function. That means I want all of my x's on one side and all of my numbers on the other side. So if I'm going to highlight, I have the sine of x on this side and I have negative sine of x on this side. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. And I'm going to say, okay, sine x plus square root of 2 equals negative sine of x. So that means I want my sine x's on the same side. So what should I do? Add the negative sine x to the other side, to both sides. Okay, so you want it like this? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So how many sine x's do I have now? Two. I got two of them. So I have two, two. sine x e plus root 2 equals 0. All right, I'm trying to get that sine of x all by itself. So what do I do? What do we do? We want to go to the other side. So we're going to subtract the square root of 2. <clears throat> so I have 2 sine of x equals negative root 2. So again, I'm going to highlight this just to, so you see. I want that sine of x all by itself. Now what am I going to do? Now I'm going to divide by 2. So I have here sine x equals negative root 2 over 2. Okay, Is that my final answer? No. no. They're telling me to do what? Look on the unit circle where what values are negative root 2 over 2? The y. So now I go over to my unit circle and I'm like, all right, where are all the y values? The y values negative <coughs> root 2 over 2. 5 pi over 4 instead of pi over 4. 5 pi over 4, agreed. Y, 7 pi over 4. You guys agree? Yeah. That's it. So you write x equals 5 pi over 4. x equals 7 pi over 4. Good. Okay, this one's a little different because it has a squared, right? All right, but again, <clears throat> the only thing I care about is solving for the trig function. I want to get tangent squared of x by itself. So what's the first thing I would do? I'm going to add one to both sides. So I have 3 times the tangent squared of x equals 1. All right, deal? I still want that tangent squared of x by itself. So what do I do? Divide by 3. Whoops. We're going to divide by 3. So I have tangent squared x equals 1 third. All right. I just want it to be tangent. What's the opposite of squaring something? The Taking the square, square root. root. So I'm going to take the square root of this side. And what you do to one side, you do where? You to, the to the other. So I have tangent x equals plus or minus, right? Because we put the square root on. Yes? Yes. Guys, can I leave this like this? No. What's the square root of 1? Oh. 1. Can I leave 1 over root 3? No. So I have to do what? I got to rationalize it. So I have root 3 over 3. You guys agree with me on that? So I'm looking on the unit circle where all of my tangents are the square root of 3 over 3. So in this case, how many answers am I going to have? Four. I'm going to have four. Good. Okay, let's remind ourselves then. we got to remember. we got to do a little extra work here because that's not my final answer. What is tangent? What over what? Y over X. Y over X. <clears throat> so. This is what we have to do. If I were you, I would try and memorize this. Let's go up here in the first quadrant. Talk about tangents. All right? I'm going to talk about just tangents. At this ordered pair, at this ordered pair, and at this ordered pair. What is the tangent value when my ordered pair is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2? Just one. Just one right? Whenever you have root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, your tangent is 1. So over here in the second quadrant, what's this tangent? Uh, 
Negative one. Down here, what's this tangent? Positive one. Over here, what's this tangent? Negative one. So whenever you have tangent equals one, you know it's going to be the ordered pair that's root two over two, root two over two. Just gotta look at where it's negative and positive. It's a good idea to memorize this. One of the tangents that we're looking at here is gonna be root three, and one of them is root three over three, depending upon where the x and the y is. So when I do the tangent of pi over three, it's y over x, right? So root three over two divided by one half. You guys agree? Yeah. So I have root three over two times what? Two over one. So the tangent when one half is first is root three. So over here, when one half is first, what's the tangent? Negative root three. Down here, when one half is first, what's the tangent? Positive root three. Over here, when tangent is, I mean when one half is first, what's the tangent? Correct. So in this bottom one, when the square root of three over two is first, I have one half divided by the square root of three over two, so that gives me one half times two over root three, right? Mm -hmm. One over root three, which becomes root three over three. So this tangent is root three over three. It's a real good idea to memorize this, then you don't have to work this out every single time. Whenever <clears throat> square root of three over two is your x value, your tangent for that ordered pair, whether it be negative or positive, is always root three over three. So if I'm looking on the unit circle where my tangent is plus minus root three over three, which four ordered pairs am I looking at? I mean, which four angles am I looking at? Which ordered pair gives me root three over three? But which ordered pair gives it to me? When x is root three over two, right? Yeah. So it's gonna be here, x is negative root three, okay. X is negative, good. And where x is root three over two. You guys see that? Yeah. So your answers would be x equals pi over six. You can write it all as one if you want. Five pi over six, seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six. You can write it all as one or you can write x equals. Tangent is the only one you gotta do a little bit of thinking, but if you memorize this, you don't have to think. As soon as it says tangent root three, you're like, oh, all the ones that start with one half. All the one that the x value is one half. <clears throat> sure. All right, let's look at factoring one here example four again they didn't tell us this but you will be told this on your test we're only talking about one trip around the unit circle so you don't have to worry about adding anything to your answer all right we're looking here we're like wait oh yeah i have two different trig functions i don't know what's going on all right when you have a quadratic when you have two different trig functions just move everything to one side all right just move everything to one side so i'm going to rewrite this as cotangent x times cosine squared x. If you want to put them in parentheses, you can. It doesn't matter. If I move 2 cotangent x to the other side, I would subtract it. You guys agree? Yes? Mm -hmm. OK, so I'm going to say minus 2 cotangent x equals 0. Everybody with me? OK, yeah. what do you notice about this first term? And about this second term? They both have a cotangent x. So we're factoring. What can I do? I can take one out. So I'm going to take out cotangent x. So if I divide this by the cotangent of x and this by the cotangent of x. <clears throat> you guys with me? Okay, so that cancels out, right? Yep. All right, 
So I'm left with cosine squared x. This cancels out, and I'm left with what? Minus 2 equals 0. Now think about this. If I had x times... Uh, hold on. 3x squared minus 2 equals 0. What would I do with each piece of that to solve it? I'd set each thing. Right? I'd say x equals 0 and 3x squared minus 2 equals 0. Same thing here. So I'm going to say cotangent x equals 0. And I'm going to say cosine squared x minus 2 equals 0. Everybody with me? Okay, cotangent of x equals zero. What that's saying is I need to look on the unit circle where, remind me what cotangent is? X over y. Okay, I need to look on the unit circle where x over y equals zero. When I put the x over the y, it equals zero. Does everybody understand that? Yep. Okay, now I'm going to go over here and solve the other one. Now, I'm not going to look at the unit circle yet. <clears throat> we'll find our answers at the end. How would I get cosine squared all by itself? What would I do? Perfect. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Okay. So I have cosine squared x equals 2. Now what? Okay. Take the square root. When I put the square root on, what goes in front of my answer? So cosine x equals plus or minus 2. So in this case, I'm looking for on the unit circle where what? equals plus or minus 2? What is cosine, x or y? Uh, x. So I'm looking where x values are a positive or negative square root of 2. Everybody with me? Okay. So let's do the blue first. Let's go to our unit circle and let's find where our x values are positive, negative, root 2. Just root 2. Does that exist anywhere? Are any x values just positive or negative root 2? Yes or no? No. So then you would say it doesn't exist. Just cross it out. There's no place on the unit circle where your x value is just positive or negative root 2. You can write no solution if you want to there. Just on this part, not on the whole thing. But on that part, doesn't exist, however you want to write it. So then over here, we have to find where the x over the y equals 0. Well, <clears throat> where would that happen? Would it happen on our ordered pairs that are in the quadrants? Or would it happen where on the x and y axis? On the x and y axis. Good. So if I say, remember, cotangent was what again? X over y, good. So if I come here and I say x value over y, I have 1 over 0. Does that give me 0? This is undefined. So I'm going to go up here to pi over 2, and I'm going to say, okay, x over y. Does that give me 0? Yes. Yes, so it's at pi over 2. Do I really have to do more work here? No. Where else is it going to be? Uh, at pi over 2 and where? 3 pi over 2. Because look, if I go here and I say x, negative 1 over 0, that gives me undefined. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say 0 over negative 1. That gives me 0. So it's quadrant angles. It happens to be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So you would say your answer is x equals pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. The hardest thing is just, if there's a lot of steps to remember. Like, okay, what is cotangent? So I go to my unit circle. Everything will be on the unit circle. You're just dealing with x and y on the unit circle. No r's, you're not using Pythagorean theorem. Everything is gonna be on the unit circle.